Rather, the man who accurately represents an opposing view is considered more credible to his audience and the hearer. And the reason for this is because he has proved his own integrity in being willing to lay aside his own bias and with it his pride, and then he can examine the matter with a genuine desire for truth. Whereas straw men are built by weak men who desire confirmation bias. A foundational ethic when it comes to debate is that you must state your opponent's position in such a way where they agree with it. Hence, when someone says they don't believe what you are claiming that they believe, it's very likely that you aren't actually criticizing them or their position, but rather a straw man you yourself erected. One thing that I strive to do on this podcast, in my own personal life and in my preaching for that matter, is to accurately represent the views that I disagree with. And honestly, this should be a given for all Christians and followers of Christ. Nonetheless, it's unfortunately common for Christians to misrepresent and lie about views that they disagree with. And it's almost as if these people have the mentality that because they disagree, it's justified, as if that is their pass. Although, if you misrepresent them, they'll whine and cry. So they've already considered said position to be wrong. So what they do is set aside their Christian virtues, their Christian character, and their Christian identity and attack your position. This is a shameful practice that needs to be doused in gasoline and left to burn in a field. We need to purge it from us as Christians and the body of Christ. It not only exists, but it permeates Christendom. And we should be ashamed before our God and his Christ. There's a whole swath of reasons why people misrepresent others, and all of them are embarrassing. Misrepresentation is shameful first because it's a manifestation of cowardice. It's cowardly because the only reason someone intentionally misrepresents another position is because they are in fact afraid to accurately represent the opposing position. See, a person who is genuinely confident that what they believe is true over against another view doesn't even feel the urge to misquote or misrepresent the other person. That is to say, if they believe that their position is true, they wouldn't need or even desire an unfair advantage. The truth will win out in the end just simply by nature of it being the truth. It also can demonstrate a lack of confidence and an insecurity in their own abilities to defend what they believe is the truth. Therefore, because they aren't secure in their own knowledge, rhetoric, or arguments, they lack confidence, and therefore they must lie and deceive. Deceit is the other reason why misrepresentation is so shameful, and this one's a little bit more straightforward. A lying tongue is always looked down upon in Scripture, and in culture and society for that matter. Liars and or manipulators are considered sleazebags or slimy. It's a similar category or idea of, as betrayal. When it's intentional, both of them are equally as shameful. For example, when you are claiming that someone believes something that they don't actually believe, and then you turn around and attack them for it, that is slimy, and that is shameful. And in that very context, it doesn't matter whether you've researched it or not. You should have thought about that before you opened your mouth. So what about ignorant deceit? That is, what if they aren't aware that what they're saying isn't true? Well, it's lying. You need to be cleansed from your secret faults, as David says. The reason is because humans and Christians have a level of responsibility to tell the truth, and especially about their neighbor. If you aren't aware of what a group believes or what a person believes, hey, that's okay. But that's a totally different thing than going around popping off at the mouth and slandering people. As I said, we have a reasonable degree of responsibility to investigate something before we form an opinion, and certainly before we share that opinion. The Apostle James commands Christians in his epistles, he commands Christians to be swift to hear and slow to speak. Lastly, misrepresentation is shameful because it is the opposite of the general idea of integrity and honor. Everyone naturally looks up to someone who is careful with their opinions, meaning the person that isn't flippant or irresponsible when speaking. That man's opinion will be held higher in our eyes. Also, we respect that person, the person who, although they disagree with one's position, is still willing to present it accurately and honestly, discussing the strengths and the weaknesses, and then in the end explaining why they don't believe that it's correct. That is honorable. That is the opposite of shame and misrepresentation. Moreover, this attitude, it demonstrates a real interest in truth. They don't just believe what they believe because they've always believed it 
or because they identify it with themselves, that would be pride. Like when someone gets upset because their position is attacked and they feel as if they've been attacked. Again, that's our pride. Rather, the man who accurately represents an opposing view is considered more credible to his audience than the hearer. And the reason for this is because he has proved his own integrity in being willing to lay aside his own bias and with it his pride, and then he can examine the matter with a genuine desire for truth. Whereas straw men are built by weak men who desire confirmation bias. They show they are insecure in their own beliefs and their own abilities to defend them, and therefore they are left merely with the tactic of deceit and their fruit of shame. 